Welcome again. This video, I am going to be addressing a comment that I got on a different video. One of the most popular videos that I ever posted, uh, Real Christians Do Not Eat Pork. Get, you know, it gets a lot of response from a lot of different people. Sometimes I respond to them on the comments themselves, but this time I just decided to do a video response. Okay, this particular person wrote this. Hey buddy, I just proved you incorrect by two verses. 1 Timothy chapter 4 and Colossians chapter 2. They both say that we are no longer under the old dispensation. Get over it. Eat some bacon. Read the verses. And under that comment, that person actually quoted the entire chapter of Colossians and partial chapter of 1 Timothy chapter 4. He said, I proved you wrong by two verses. Hmm. What two verses did you actually refer to there? Now, I'm going to address Colossians chapter 2 and also 1 Timothy chapter 4. But before I do that, let's talk about Romans chapter 14, okay? The same person that wrote Timothy and the same person that wrote Colossians also wrote Romans. He says very clearly in there, if there's anything that you eat or drink that causes another man to stumble, that causes another person to stumble, then you are not acting in God's love and you should not eat or drink it. That in doing so, you are sinning against Christ. Now, anybody who has done any witnessing to Muslims or Jews, you know that one of the biggest objections they have to Christianity, especially Muslims, is that Christians are pig eaters, okay? And that is a huge hang-up, especially in the world of the Muslim faith, okay? It's a huge hang-up. Now, I can tell you first-hand experience. I know a person who was a Muslim, and that was the first thing they said, well, you eat pork, you know, you're a pig eater. I'm like, no, I don't. You know, I obey God's rules. I obey God. And I tell you, to make a long story short, that person came to the faith of Jesus Christ. They renounced Islam completely, and they accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior, and they read the Bible through more than anybody that I know of in the Christian world, in the church. And this dramatic conversion all happened because I decided not to eat pork. Now, no matter which way you look at it, if you think that it's okay now for Christians to eat pork, no matter which way you look at it, you shouldn't because you are putting a stumbling block in the way of millions of Muslims and Jews, by the way. And don't forget, the scripture says over and over again that God's primary focus is the Jewish people. And so if you want to walk in God's ways, you've got to first and foremost focus on the Jewish people. As God says, first the Jew, then the Gentile. So no matter which way you look at it, eating pork is a sin against Christ, according to the scriptures. And number two, if it's true that all of a sudden now, in this so-called dispensation, we can eat pork now, then you know what? God is a liar. He said, 40 plus times in the books of Moses alone that the law is eternal, perpetual, forever, everlasting to all generations. So if this particular person thinks they prove me wrong by two verses, and they actually quote the entire chapter, like they, don't, they don't tell me which two verses they're talking about. But if this person actually thinks that I am proved wrong by two verses, what about the 40 plus verses that you overlook in the books of Moses alone? That's not including all the rest of the verses in the so-called Old Testament that says that God's word is forever, forever settled in heaven, never changing. I am the Lord, I change not over and over and over again. Do you think God just, you know, somehow just wanted to just make up rules and just say, well, what am I going to do? How am I going to just kind of lord it over my people? And let's just make up a dietary laws. Let's just say you, should, you shouldn't eat this and that and everything else. And let's say, oh, well, let's say my law is eternal. Let's, I, I think I'll tell them 40 plus times in the books of Moses alone. Okay. I think I'll tell them that 40 plus times. And then, uh, uh, 
I, maybe I just made a mistake. You know, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, children of Israel. I'm sorry, Jewish people. I'm sorry, my beloved people. I just, um, I just told you scores and scores of times that it's eternal, but I changed my mind. I, you know, um, I'm sorry. I was wrong. I made, I made a big mistake, okay? I shouldn't have said that. Do you actually think God did that? Do you actually think God is that stupid? Now, let's talk about the book of Colossians chapter 2. I assume that one of the so-called two verses that that person was actually referring to was Colossians chapter 2 verse 16. This is what it says. Therefore, do not let anyone judge you by what you eat or drink or with regard to a religious festival, a new moon celebration, or a Sabbath day. The fact that this person actually even referenced this shows you how ignorant and how ill-educated this person actually is. In context, the city of Colossae was known for its extreme views on asceticism. The city and the region of Colossae was known historically for great asceticism, which means they thought that it was absolutely sinful to do any kind of festival, any kind of celebration, any kind of feast at all, okay? They thought that was sinful. In their own minds, you need to walk humbly, and that means basically to walk around as a pauper and eat nothing but, you know, the most humblest of foods. They looked at it as an evil thing to actually enjoy any kind of festival, any kind of feast, any kind of food. And so, knowing that the first century church observed the festivals, the new moons, the Sabbaths, and the feasts of the Lord. They were judged by these people. They're like, oh, you shouldn't be doing that. You shouldn't be observing, you shouldn't be celebrating the Sabbath like that. You shouldn't be celebrating the new moons and, and the feasts, and, and you shouldn't be eating like that because you see, that's not humility. God doesn't want you to do that. So they judged them for that. And for those of you who are very ill-informed about this, I encourage you to go through the book of Acts. Check out the teachings and the devotionals that we did all the way through the book of Acts, which proves over and over and over and over again that these people, the first century church, was Torah observant, observing all the feasts, the Sabbaths, always meeting in the synagogues, never going to a church building or any kind of thing like that, but they were always observing Torah blamelessly. Acts chapter 21 makes it very clear that Paul walked order according to the Torah and according to the customs of the Jews. He proved it very clearly in Acts chapter 21. Also, Philippians chapter 2, Paul says very clearly in regards to the law of God, he is blameless. He doesn't break one commandment. Okay, so if Paul is telling other people, well, it's okay to obey the law of God. Well, you know, you don't have to go by the law of God. And then in the next breath, he says, well, I obey the law of God blamelessly. I do it perfectly. And he proved it in Acts chapter Chapter 21. Guess what? If that's true, if it's true that he teaches people to break Torah and then he says himself that he doesn't, that makes him a hypocrite, a double standard man. And if that's the case, his writings are not even worthy to be read, to be honest with you. But I declare that his writings are worthy to be read and that you need to take them in context. 2,000 years later, in this culture, so many people have misunderstood so many things according to the warning that Peter gave us in 2 Peter chapter 3. And so Colossians chapter 2 is proof, if anything else, it's proof that these people actually did obey the feasts, the new moons, the Sabbaths, and the dietary laws of Torah because they were judged for it. In regards to 1 Timothy chapter 4, I assume that the other verse that that person was referring to is verse 3. They forbid people to marry and order them to abstain from certain foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe. Believe what? Believe God's word, obviously, and his law, obviously, and who know the truth. Paul is not specific about what the certain foods are. We don't know the entire story here. This is Paul's personal letter to Timothy. Nobody knew exactly what he was talking about except for Timothy alone. Paul wasn't writing to us. Paul was writing to Timothy. Those certain foods might have been apples, 
oranges, who knows what it might have been. We know that those certain foods are not, in context, not the foods that God forbid us to eat. Again, in context, if you know the context, if you know the culture, if Paul or Peter or anybody for that matter told anybody or taught anybody, you know what, it's okay, go eat bacon now, you know, go slaughter a pig, go, you know, be a pig eater now. If that's true, in that culture, they would have been immediately arrested and they would have been hauled before the Sanhedrin, tried and convicted for teaching against the law of God. But we know that the truth is the opposite. You know, according to Acts chapter 21 again, Paul made it very clear, no, he doesn't teach other people to, you know, to forsake Moses, to forsake the law of God. He doesn't teach that. He proved that emphatically. Those certain foods might have been goats, might have been cows. We don't know. For example, if Timothy was among certain people like how we see now in India, then those certain foods would be foods like beef. Another example is that history tells us that in Egypt, they worshipped the goat. They worshipped the lamb. So if Timothy is eating lambs, according to the Torah, and he's amongst people who worship lambs as a deity, then certainly they're going to command Timothy not to eat of goats or lambs. In context here, Paul is talking about people who have a really weird sense of how to obey God or a really weird sense of laws where you can't marry and you can't eat these certain foods. Obviously, in that context, Paul's not talking about people who are teaching Timothy to obey Torah. Torah does not forbid people to marry. So let's read this in context. But I would advise this certain person to actually get educated. And in case you don't know how to do that, well, scroll through some of the comments. See how I responded to some of these people. Go to the blog, ChristopherEnoch.org. I have addressed many issues that this person actually talked about, okay? Including the heresy of dispensationalism. I would just advise to actually get educated and to actually think about things before you write them. And as for the rest of you, as always, keep seeking God. And if you do, you will find him in every area of your life. Call upon him and he will show you great and mighty things, things that just might go against everything you've heard all of your life. Don't be too proud to think that you could never believe a lie because a lot of people actually have. Always approach every topic and every point with the attitude that you could be wrong. Love you guys.